Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this video we'll be looking at how to create a web scraper that scrapes trending video data from a website like YouTube while using a proxy to change our geolocation and also rotate between various IPs to avoid getting rate limited and have access to YouTube's trending video list from various countries slash regions. So now there is a bunch of free proxies out there that you could use um, to basically change your location uh, but the issue you're going to run into is that most of these free proxies aren't really reliable due to latency, downtime or other reasons and most of them will also not allow you with the ability to easily auto rotate between various IP addresses or change your geolocation of the proxy easily within your code. So in this tutorial I have used um, the residential proxy service from IP Royal who have kindly um, sponsored today's video. IP Royal is a proxy service provider providing safe, private and unrestricted access to online information. With a pool of over 2 million plus reliable IPs, IP Royal allows clients to use a proxy server as an intermediary between their devices and the web, which, which allows clients to maintain their privacy and use resources they can't access directly due to geo restrictions, etc. IP Royal's data center proxies can serve as a great product for businesses or users looking for premium high-speed anonymous private proxies, which usually have unlimited bandwidth and no extra charges. For data scraping though, I would recommend using IP Royal's re residential proxies as they not only allow anonymity when scraping websites, which can help avoid getting rate limited, but also let you select the geolocation of the proxy either through the dashboard or by making minor changes in your code. Lastly, IP Royal handles automatic IP rotation, which not only allows easy integration within your code, but they also provide the option to use static IPs in case that you decide to keep an IP for a longer duration of time. In this video, IP Royal has provided me with a discount code that will give you guys a straight 50% discount on their Royal Residential Proxies. The code is Johan50 and I've also included a link in the description which you guys can use to obtain the discount. So guys, make sure to use the discount code before the deal expires or you'll be missing on a great deal. Okay, so now that we have looked into a bit more about IP Royal and their services as well as sort of how proxies work, we're going to get right into the code. So for this tutorial, you're going to need to install a few dependencies which have all been stated down here. So go ahead and run the pip install command for web driver manager, selenium wire, beautiful soup for and pandas. I'll also be linking these in the description to sort of make your life easier. So to begin with, we're basically going to import all of these dependencies. So I'm going to get rid of this. These can be found in the description, so feel free to go and get them from there. So we're going to be using Selenium Wire, um, which is mainly going to be used to basically scrape all the content from YouTube. And since YouTube is a dynamic website, we are using Selenium Wire. Otherwise, we'd be using something simpler like requests which um, basically helps us scrape static websites. So nothing to do with um, JavaScript. Next thing we're going to need is beautiful soap, um, beautiful soup, which will basically help us pass the uh, text content of the website that we're scraping. And then we're going to also need the web, uh, web driver manager, specifically the Chrome um, driver manager, sorry. So we do dot Chrome, import Chrome driver manager. What this is going to help us do is uh, avoid us having to manu uh, avoid us having to manually install the Chrome driver that's compatible with the Chrome version we have installed on our computer, since Selenium uh, requires the Chrome driver or Firefox driver, depending on what you're using. We are also going to be needing um, pandas to basically nicely format our table of data. So import pandas as PD. And then lastly, we're gonna to need to import time to sort of basically add a bit of uh, gap in the execution of our code. So let's run all of this and hopefully all of it should run fine for you guys if you've installed all the dependencies correctly. I've got a little warning here due to a uh, clash in the version I have, but it should be fine. No issues to worry about. So, First things we want to do is we want to initialize the um, Chrome web driver. So we create a new variable and then assign that to webdriver.chrome because we're using Chrome, uh, the Chrome web driver. 
and we need to provide the um, usually you need to provide the environment path or the path to your uh, driver that's compatible with the Chrome version you have installed but since we're using Chrome driver manager this will automatically install the um, driver that's required uh, for the version of Chrome we have installed and handle all of that by itself now now that we have this sorted we have the driver initialized the next thing you, you could do is click on uh, type in driver dot get and then you would put the URL of the website you want to get uh, content from so like I was saying we're going to be uh, scraping some data off of YouTube's trending feed so let me go ahead and open a browser here um, let's go to youtube.com and we need to basically find the page that include. we need to find the URL that includes the trending page so we're going to go to uh, explore I believe it is and then trending so essentially this is the page we need to get down to I'm going to click on accept all and all we're going to need is just this bit here so youtube.com feed trending so that's the URL that we're looking for once we have that URL we can chuck that in here because that's the URL we want to grab and now if you quickly run the code what you're going to notice is that a Chrome uh, window should pop up like this and what you're going to see is it basically opens up the URL that we asked it to open. Now the first sort of hurdle we have before getting to our data is that we are prompted with this sort of Google prompt that we need to click on accept all um, before we even get directed to the website that actually has the content we're looking to scrape. So we're so using Selenium, we need to figure out how to click on this little button right here. Now the way you do that is you would inspect the element and then you would need to find, uh, so inspect again, and then since this element is a button in HTML, you'd need to find the class of this button. Now if we look at the class, this uh, it has multiple classes, so that's one class. Each class, class name is sort of separated by a space here. So that's one class, that's another class, and so on and so forth. Now to save you guys some hassle, I have already found out what the class of this uh, button is. So it is the second class, which is VFPPKD and then ending with P, uh, Q, uh, QPJ. So that's the class we're looking for. Now classes are nothing more than just a unique way of identifying different elements. So that's just a unique way of identifying that specific button. So I'm going to close that window down for now and what we're going to do next is basically use something called um, driver.find element by class name uh, element sorry by CSS selector and then uh, the CSS selector whenever we're trying to obtain an item using its class we use a dot to refer to class and we use a hashtag to refer to ID which is a bit more specific but we use a dot and then we specify the class name of the button so I have a copy made of the class name which is right here so that's the class name we discussed uh, that refers to the button now that we grab the button um, by its class we just use the dot click method and essentially what Selenium will go ahead and do is look for this button um, with this class name and then click on it. Let's run this again to see an action. So I give it a few seconds because it does take a moment and here it is loading up. Give it a quick moment and you will see it disappear because basically what Selenium has gone ahead and done is clicked on the accept prompt and now what you can see is the YouTube trending page that we actually are looking for. Now at this stage we haven't incorporated any proxies which is why we're seeing the U UK um, trending feed. Once we have incorporated proxies we'll be able to use auto-rotating IPs, um, select uh, proxies from various countries as well as uh, select specific countries, regions or cities which is amazing. So I'm going to close this down and then we, we move on to the next bit. Now what I noticed while making this tutorial is that the prompt which uh, we need to click accept all only sometimes appear and sometimes it doesn't so when it doesn't appear if we try to select that element which doesn't exist on the page and try to click on it we'll be faced with an error so we're just going to add a simple try and accept statement here which is basically going to try to click on the button if it exists and if it doesn't exist we're just going to accept the exception and then pass I mean not the best practice but does the job for what we're trying to do so if it doesn't exist and if this error is due to the um, button or screen not existing we're just going to pass and not do anything about it 
So the next thing we want to do is we want to grab the content that's rendered on the page, um, which basically contains all the list of uh, trending videos. So we're going to use a variable called soup and then we're going to assign that to beautiful soup and basically pass the page source of the driver. So now that the driver has clicked on the button and has redirected us to the trending page, we'll basically take the HTML code that was rendered by the driver and then pass it in beautiful soup so that we can find a specific element that we're looking for. Now that this is done, uh, I'll just quickly run this to show you guys what we're looking for specifically. So let it run, give it a quick moment to accept everything. It's accepted and now we're redirected to this page, which at this point we've already passed this whole page using beautiful soup. Now we want, we only really care about the videos uh, and for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to scrape the title of the video and the URL of the video and probably the country which uh, from which this trending page was scraped from. So I'm going to click on inspect just to see uh, what element we're trying to grab. So click on inspect again over here. And if I get rid of this, uh, let's just try and find the A tag, which should basically contain, if I'm not wrong. So that's the, that's a different class. So we need the, we need the anchor tag, which basically should contain Oh, there is. So anchor tag is basically a URL tag in HTML. And basically what it lets you do is assign a link to it. And when you click on it, it will redirect you. So this anchor tag basically is on all of these videos right here. So this anchor tag exists on all of them. And YouTube has decided to give it a unique ID called video title. So all of the anchor tags have this unique ID called video title. The reason I know this is because I've already scraped a version of this beforehand. So we are going to want to grab all these anchor tags from this page, which have the ID of video title. Now, once we have this anchor tag, we can see that one of the attributes of this anchor tag is title and the title is, you know, the title of the video. So, and the other bit that we were also looking for was the URL, which we've got in the href attribute, which we can grab from here. So we want to try and grab all the anchor tags with the ID of video title from this page. So let's try and do that now that we have the page passed in the soup object right here. To do that, you basically just want to create a new variable called trending videos, which is going to be a list and you're going to use soup, which is the entire page and then the find all method because we want to find all the elements that have an anchor tag. So we're going to say we want to find all the anchor tags with the ID of video title. Now we have got this ID from the HTML inspect that we did. Um, and you can see the ID is video title. So we want to grab all the anchor tags that have the ID video title. And what we're going to do for now is just print trending video. It should end up being a list of all the anchor tags. Um, just leave this here as well, just so you guys can see. It should end up being a list of all the anchor tags on this page with the ID of video title. So let it load, give it a moment. And then once it's done loading, we will scroll down over here. And as you can see, amazing, we have a list of anchor tags, uh, which contain all of the videos on the YouTube page. So we can confirm this by looking at the first uh, sort of title that we have, which is siblings or dating in real life edition. Compare this to the normal page. That's the first one. Then let's look at the last one. And the last one is, uh, is Netflix just making bad movies on purpose? So we scroll down in our list and we look at the title. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, title, title. Yeah, there you go. Is Netflix just making bad movies on purpose? And it's correct. So we just compared the first and last element of our list and it matches with our page, which means we've got everything we need. Now, each of these elements in this list is an actual element, uh, like an actual beautiful soup element that we can like pass or, or navigate through. So the bits that we, the only two bits that we need from each of these URLs or anchor tags is we need the title, which is, uh, where is it gone? So we need the title attribute. So this text right here, and we need the href, which includes the link. 
So to get that, all we need to do is loop through this array. So we're going to do for trending video in trending videos. What we want to do is um, do trending. For now, I'm just going to print trending video. Uh, and then we're going to print the title attribute of each element. And then we're also going to print trending video. And we're going to print href attribute, which should include the link. Now I'm going to break after the first iteration because I only want to do this once. So let's run this again. And I'm not going to show you the window of Chrome that opens up because I'm pretty sure you guys are bored of it. But it's doing its job in the corner of my screen. And let's give it a few seconds to load. Um, hopefully anytime soon. And as you can see, it's printed out the title for the first video since we're breaking off the first iteration and the href um, or the URL for the first video. Now we're just going to create a variable, uh, maybe in the cell above called data. And then we're going to assign that to be an empty array. We're going to write all of our data to this, uh, to this list. So we're going to write data.append and then we're going to write uh, an object. Uh, sorry, a dictionary. I'm going back from using JavaScript, so sorry about the use of object. So we're going to use dates.append and then why is it highlighted as? So we're going to use data.append and we're going to write in a dictionary and the first key is going to be title and the value is going to be trending video and the title um, attribute. And the second key value is going to be the uh, URL. So the key is going to be URL and the value is going to be turning video and href as the attribute. So let's quickly run this up. And this time we're going to run it for the entire trending videos list. So it should hopefully do it for the entire entirety of the YouTube page. Let's run this. And I'm not too sure why it's giving me a data is not defined, even though it's defined up here probably just glitching but we shall find out in a second so it's running right now doing its job give it a moment and voila it's run completely fine I think my lint has bugged out but if we print out data what you should be able to see is each uh, video is in, in a form of a dictionary and we have a title and we have a URL for each of those videos now we're also going to add in a country key and value later on, but we're going to get into that in a second. So now that we have this just for the UK, what we're going to try and do is incorporate uh, the ability to change proxies now, which is where it gets interesting. So what you're going to need um, is to what you're going to need to do is is to basically use something called um, uh, losing words here but we're basically going to need to set up the options for our selenium connection so where we initialize our driver we're going to have to give it an additional per additional parameter for um, selenium wire options which will basically specify our proxy and stuff so first things first what you want to store um, in here is uh, you want to have the proxy so since we're using IP Royal, uh, our proxy is going to be authenticated. So we have a username, password, and uh, the URL and port to the proxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an F string and I'm going to open up the dashboard for IP Royal, uh, which I have right here. So that's what the dashboard looks like for IP Royal. And for the sake of this tutorial, they've given me a generous amount of two gigabytes to demonstrate to you guys. Uh, feel free to use. Um, Feel free to use the proxies if you would like to, which is why I'm not blurring it. So go ahead if you'd like to use it. Um, what we're going to need here is basically the we, we can set up the country for which we want the proxy to be in. At the moment, it's set to random, but uh, you can select a specific country and then you can select a rotation. So whether you want to keep a sticky IP, which means keep the same IP for a certain duration, or just randomize uh, automatically, which is the option we're going to go with at the moment. Now, we, what we want to do next is grab this URL right here, which basically contains our username, our password, and uh, the host name and port. This will basically allow us to connect to this proxy via Selenium. 
Now, what, what you'll notice is if we were to select a specific country, which we need to do anyway, since we are trying to scrape data for, you know, USA trending videos or Spain trending videos and some other countries. Uh, what we will notice is, let's say if we selected United States, notice what happens to the URL right here. Everything remains the same. The only thing that has been changed is there is now an underscore country dash and then the two digit country code. Now this is pretty standard for basically all the countries. If I were to change this to United Kingdom, it will do underscore uh, country and then dash GB, GB being Great Britain, the two digit code for UK. Now as long as you know uh, the country codes of the countries you're trying to scrape, you could dynamically change this uh, URL within your code pretty easily by using an f-string. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Now let's just grab this for now without making any changes. Don't copy the rest of it just from here to here. Copy it and then let's chuck it into our proxies. Uh, proxy over here. So we're just going to be in country United Kingdom for now, nothing too fancy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to create a few param an object with uh, parameters. So options is going to be a dictionary, sorry for calling it object again, where we specify proxy and then we need to specify the HTTP proxy which is going to be this one right here. So uh, the same one is going to be used across HTTP and HTTPS according to IP Royals documentation. So that's pretty much it for the configuration. We just need to tell Selenium where our proxy sits and what the credentials are, which we provided up here. Now that we have the options set up in a nice little dictionary, we're going to use, uh, we're going to tell the driver where to find these arguments uh, slash where to find this configuration. So Selenium by options equals options should basically do the trick for that. Now, um, let's maybe, instead of doing Great Britain, since we've already, we, we are in UK, we can see the trending list for Great Britain. Let's change it to perhaps, um, let's say, I think Spain should be interesting. So let's do ES. Let's run the whole thing again. And hopefully when Selenium tries scraping, we should see the trending items for Spain. Let's run this up going to take a second because we're now using proxy so it takes a bit of time because of how selenium is okay so it's loaded up now we're just waiting for selenium to click on the button and then redirect us to the trending page so it's redirecting to the trending page and it's going to take a while because obviously it's loading a lot of images and stuff but as you can see this trending page looks pretty altered to spain i mean completely different to what we saw in the UK one. The UK one had some stuff about dating in real life and whatnot. Now, once it's done this, what it's also done is, okay, this is the previous list of UK ones. So you can see UK heat wave was another video in the trending. But now if you look at data, it'd be completely different because we've got basically everything for Spain and it looks like it's mainly football orientated, which sounds about right. There's also a lot of Spanish within the titles. So amazing, we've managed to use a proxy to switch our location and in the dashboard, we've also um, configured it to basically use random um, random IP addresses, which is amazing because now we won't even get rate limited by the site. So now that we know how to do this for one country, we can do it for several countries just by changing the country code right here. To do this, let's just make a quick list, which is going to be called countries and this, these are basically going to be countries that we want to scrape so let's start with US then we'll do Great Britain and then we'll also do Spain now let's run these two cells up and what we're going to do is we're going to basically want to run through each of these countries inside the countries list so we're going to do for I comma country in enumerate countries Enumerate just gives you access to the um, sort of index as well. So the it's like a variable that's incremented by one every time. And then country is just each of these strings right here. So basically in our F string, we're going to replace ES with the country value. So whatever it is that we are looping through at the moment. So we'll start with US, then go to GB and then ES. So we're going to do that. And then the next thing you want to do is... Um, since we're going to be dealing with multiple scrapes now in a in a row we want to once we're done scraping down here 
the trending videos for a specific country and we've added it to our data we want to time dot sleep two seconds just to give selenium a bit of time and then we want to do driver dot quit so that we actually close the instance of selenium we just use and then the next instance will open a new instance of selenium otherwise we'll sort of be hogging on our resources on the computer now another quick optimization we could also make is like i was talking about before we'll disable uh, images being loaded when selenium tries to scrape data from the site because we don't really care about the images we only care about the title and the url and stopping images from loading will surely save us a bit of time on the scrape if we were to do it in a large scale scrape so to do this create a new variable called chrome options and we're going to equal that to web driver which we've already imported from selenium um, wire and then do dot chrome options now we're going to do chrome options dot add argument now bear in mind there's a lot of configuration that you can do um, i refer to this from the documentation so feel free to take a look at the documentation and look at different ways of optimizing your code but for the sake of this tutorial i'm only going to disable the um, images from being loaded in the scrape so now when the scrape actually starts you'll notice that when youtube trending page loads it'll be a little bit quicker and also the fact that um, the images won't show up for the thumbnails now last thing we need to do is we imported pandas to sort of format the data in a nice way so we're going to do that we're going to do p um, data frame equals data frame is just like a table like an excel table think about it that way and then we're going to use pd for panda dot data frame so to convert our data list into a nice little data frame that looks like um well we'll look how it looks like in a second because obviously data is empty at the moment so let's run this up and hopefully it should scrape all of the trending videos for countries US, Great Britain and Spain. Let's run it up. Hopefully there's no errors. Fingers crossed. Okay, the instance has opened up and now we can just watch this go. Once loaded in and it was for USA and it does look like the feed is altered to USA. I mean, pretty generic stuff. Um, purge halloween and all that stuff so it looks like one of the scrapes was complete since we instructed selenium to quit right after it's complete and if you guys have also noticed the uh, um, load time is improved by a little bit because we're not loading images and stuff on the scrape so here's the second one i'm assuming this is for uk so hopefully the page will be altered to uk there we go uk page is loaded in as well and then now lastly we need to scrape off the what's the page we're scraping we're scraping uh spain now so accept the accept all and then we're just going to be scraping the feed for spain okay hopefully this runs just fine and then we should hopefully have data for three countries um based on the trending pages it ran in pretty decent time to be honest as well so that's pretty good now that we have run that look at this we have a beautiful data frame which has the um, trending list for three different countries fascinating we can all, now that we have it in a data frame i mean this is not a pandas tutorial but just a bit of extra if you guys are curious uh, we can use things like query so we can do df.query and we can say um i don't know the title is equal to a specific thing so the title equals i don't know hello ween ends official trailer and it, what it's going to do is it's only going to show us the records that include um halloween and official trailer there is some duplicates in this data but we can drop them quite easily by doing uh df dot drop duplicates and we drop the duplicates by the title and once we've dropped we are left around 426 uh, records the last thing we want to do is add in a country column in here because we don't know which uh, titles and URLs are for which country. So to do that, we can simply create a new key value pair in here. So I'm going to do country and the key is going to be country. The value is going to be country, which is being pulled, which is the two letter country code from up here being pulled from the country's list. Right. So you can add a bit of jazz to your code just to see what the progress of the scraper is by doing something like this. So say completed um, i plus 1 out of the length of uh, length of the 
countries list basically it will just give you the a pro, sort of progress a BTEC progress bar um, that will tell you how far the progress has gone let's run this again and hopefully we should get a final output I know this tutorial is already quite long but I'm really hoping you guys have learned a lot and enjoyed it so far so let's look at what's going on running it for the first one um, Okay, the first one's loaded in, just waiting for it to grab everything and then start the second one. Cool. As you can see, we're going to start the second one now. Second instance is going to be started soon. I might fast forward some of this during the edit just to save you guys some time, but basically you're bas looking at the same stuff that we looked at last time, just waiting for the data table to have the country column as well so that we can query the data by the different countries too. So this is the feed for UK, if I'm not mistaken, and then the last one is for Spain. Yep, Spain. You can add a lot more countries in there as well, and obviously I have a data limit of two gigs at the moment, which um, IP proxies, uh, sorry, IP Royal has been quite generous to give me. Uh, if you guys were to use the 50% discount, of course, it should be pretty uh, reasonable price to get a high performing proxy. So surely would recommend. So that's the last one that is scraped. Um, took slightly longer than last time, but let's look at the results. We have country as well this time, amazing. So we're gonna drop the duplicates. Um, by title we end up with 246 records uh, we can do in place equals true to actually save the changes to the data frame and now we have 246 rows now we can query things like the country so we can say okay I only want to look at the um, trending videos for US so we're just going to do df.query country is equal to US and this will make sure that we're only looking at the data for USA. Then we can do the same thing with GB. So this is basically only trending videos for UK. And if we did the same thing for, um, let's say, Spain, we'll get the same thing for Spain. So only show you trending videos for Spain. We can also use things like or. So you can say if country equals Spain or country equals United Kingdom. So this will basically give us uh, records for both. And that's pretty much it, guys. If you wanted to save this to a file, you could just do df.2csv, give the file a name. So I don't know, um, trending list, youtube.csv, and then index false. And by doing that, you would have saved that to a nice Excel file, a CSV file which you can view in future purposes. Hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial, guys. Um, please leave me any feedback uh, or any tutorials that you would like in the future. And I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace. <laughs>